Hi, this is Mr. Mentner, and welcome to our screencast on sexual versus asexual reproduction. You'll have to bear with me. I'm still uh, suffering from a sinus infection that's causing my voice to do weird things. But we're going to talk about this. We've got a test coming up on this. And uh, it's all about what I want to say first is sexual versus asexual reproduction. Whatever type of reproduction you're talking about, it's all about the DNA. Okay, it's all about DNA. And DNA, if you look here... It looks like a spiral staircase. The, the actual terminology is, is this is a double helix. And if I look at the inside of these rungs, I've got four bases. I've got adenine, thymine, cytosine, and guanine. And if you look, A is always with T and C is always with G whenever they bond together. And, and, and that is always true. And it's the order of these bases that make everything unique. That's what makes the DNA what it is. It's not this outside part, the sugar and phosphate part, but it is, the, it is these bases, the, these bases, the A's with T and the C's with G, and the order of those bases tells the ribosomes what proteins to code for. So that, that's really cool. Now, the way I remember that is A and T go together. That spells the word at, and G and C go together, and there's a G and C store in the mall that sells vitamins and and protein shakes and so forth. So G and C and A and T, they go together, okay? And, and, and always, they always fit together that way. And there's a reason for that. And we'll get into that later in the chemistry of it. There's two main types in, in biology. We, use, we take all living things and we divide them into two main categories. And, and we divide them into prokaryotes and eukaryotes. And the thing that I want you to understand is that it's prokaryotes and eukaryotes. And this is a eukaryotic cell, and if we look at the scale here, it is, it is much larger than the scale for prokaryote. So eukaryotic cells are much larger. They also have membrane-bound organelles here. These have no organelles. Inside the nucleus, which is a membrane, they have chromosomes where the DNA is located. There is DNA in here, but it's not in chromosome form. It's just, it's just coiled up in circles. And the only organelle they have are ribosomes. Over here we have mitochondria, which, um, which are little mini factories that, that produce energy. Um, we have, in plant cells, we have chloroplasts, which capture energy from the sun and make food. All those things are in eukaryotic cells. The only thing in a prokaryotic cell, really, we got ribosomes, we got the nucleus. We don't, I'm sorry, we don't have a nucleus, we have DNA. And, and the only thing that's a prokaryote is bacteria. Everything else is a eukaryote. So bacteria are prokaryotes. Everything else is eukaryotes. Okay? So if I go to the next slide, if I look at prokaryote re reproduction, reproduction in a bacteria, it's asexual, which means they make a clone, an exact copy. And the way they do that is through a process called binary fission right here. In binary fission, it looks like this. You make another copy and it just splits. What's going to happen is it's all about the DNA. If I'm going to reproduce, the DNA is the most important part. And I'm going to take a DNA, I'm going to make a copy of it, and then I'm just going to split that DNA up and make two new ones. This can happen very, very fast. Bacterial reproduction can happen. Sometimes they double themselves every 15 minutes. So I could have one bacteria, 15 minutes later have two, 15 minutes later have four, and so on, and it just grows and grows and grows very quickly. But that's binary fission, and that's only for bacteria and prokaryotic reproduction. If we look at eukaryote reproduction, sometimes it's asexual, sometimes it's sexual. We're just going to look at the asexual part right now. Uh, there's budding. Budding is like here. We have a hydra. It starts to grow off, and then I get this little thing, and then it, it, it comes off, it pops off, and now I've got two that are exactly like each other. Again, with asexual reproduction, you get clones. You get exact copies of the DNA. It's the same as it was before. Another thing is, is, is regeneration, like in starfish. If you cut up the starfish across the middle, they'll grow, they'll grow back the missing parts. Cuttings in plants. Another way in plants is things called runners. Um, here you have a strawberry plant, and, the, and these things grow out, and when they touch the ground, new sets of roots form, and I get new strawberry plants. Let's go back to this again. I get new strawberry plants off of the main one, and those are exact copies. There's, there's the exact same DNA. They're clones of the original parent. Um, and then sometimes mitosis is a process in which we do 
uh, for single-celled eukaryotic organisms to do asexual reproduction. The main thing with asexual reproduction is you have the same DNA, so you have the exact same organism. It's just a clone. It's, it's, it's the same DNA, okay? So let's look at mitosis in more, in more detail. Because the DNA in eukaryotes is, is coiled around uh, proteins, histone proteins, into something called chromosomes, like here, um, you can't just split the DNA, copy the DNA and split it. You have to go through a process where you copy chromosomes and then you, you get rid of those, you, you split those chromosomes up because all the DNA is in these chromosomes. And the way that's important is all the DNA gets coiled. There's a lot of DNA here. And, and remember, DNA has got a sugar group, a deoxyribose sugar, a phosphate group, and those bases. Now, those phosphate groups are negative negatively charged, and negative charged particles want to repel each other. And so what happens is, is that the DNA has to, the histone proteins help that negative so it can stay together tightly. Those histone proteins are very, very important. And you carry out single-celled, they use asexual reproduction sometimes, and that's through mitosis. But mitosis is also used in us and, and all other eukaryotes for growth, so our cells never get bigger. We just make more cells. So from the time we were a baby to where we are now, or even as a full-grown adult, I've gotten a little bigger at my midsection. That is more cells. My cells haven't gotten bigger. And repair tissues. If I have a break in my skin, if I uh, cut myself, skin my knee, if I tear a muscle, you know, I have a, a you know, pulled muscle or something, those get repaired through mitosis. So let's look at mitosis in more, in, in more detail. We start off here with interphase, and an interphase, it's called, it starts with an I, and so that's in between, and what happens there is that's when the DNA, that's when the chromosomes get copied. And then we go to prophase. Prophase, we start seeing the, the chromosomes coil up, spindle fibers form, the nuclear membrane disappears, and we're getting ready. The P in prophase is prepared. We're getting prepared for the copying to make. The metaphase happens next, and the M for metaphase stands for middle. All the chromosomes line up in the middle with their copy that was made during interphase. They have a copy here. And then A and anaphase stands for away. They're pulled away from their copy, identical, co identical copy. And then telophase, the T stands for two. I get two new nuclei that are exactly like each other. And then what's not shown here is the rest of the cell divides through something called cytokinesis. So here's what I want you to understand. In a human cell, there are 46 chromosomes. In interphase, we copy those, and it gets to 92. And those 92 chromosomes go through this process where there are 46 pairs here, 92 chromosomes, and they get pulled away, 46 going this way, 46 going this way, and then I get two new nuclei with 46 and 46 that are exactly like, exactly like the cell we started with. We did this in class with chocolate. We did this in class with pipe cleaners. You, you should have this down. Know the different phases. Okay? Now, the next thing we're going to look at is sexual reproduction. Sexual reproduction is about creating new genetic combinations in offspring. They're not exactly like their parents. You need to have two parents, and they, the offspring is never exactly like either parent. It's getting new DNA, new genetic combinations. You must have something called meiosis take place to form gametes. Gametes are sex cells. Sometimes sperm is a gamete. Egg cells are gametes. And they come together. Sexual reproduction is not about touching. This isn't about some act, okay? I know you think of sex as an act, but in biology, we're not talking about that. Fish never touch, but they do sexual reproduction. What happens is the female lays their eggs, the male comes across, and and the sperm is released, and those sperm, they swim to an egg. And they, the fish never touch another fish. They never go through some act of mating, but yet there's sexual reproduction because every new fish is new, new DNA, not anything like, or it's not exactly like either parent, okay? Now, with sexual reproduction, it's all about meiosis. It's all about making gametes. What we're going to do is we're going to look at chromosomes, and this is a human karyotype. Notice there's 46 chromosomes, but it's in 23 pairs. And the reason there's 23 pairs is they're called homologous pairs. you got one from dad and one from mom, and one from dad and one from mom, and one from dad and one from mom on these chromosomes. 
and they're paired up because like right here might be eye color and right here might be eye color. And right here might be, um, you know, whether or not you can do this. And right here might be, I mean, they're all, they're all on the same chromosomes and you got one from each parent. We're going to talk in the next unit how that gets worked out and how you become you. But you have 23 pair. What meiosis is about is splitting these pairs up so you get exactly half. You get one of these, 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 you only get one of each. And you might get the one you got from your dad. You might give the one you got from your mom. You might, who knows what, it's completely random. It's like shuffling cards. But that's what meiosis is about. Now, meiosis, we start off, see here, we got four chromosomes, a 2N number. The diploid number would be uh, four. In the end, each daughter cell, there'll be four, is going to be haploid, meaning it has half the number of chromosomes. Notice you got the two red ones from mom, the two blue ones from dad. You got a blue one and a red one. You got a blue one and a red I mean, And notice down here also that the red one's got some blue on it. Uh, blue ones sometimes have a little red on it. That's because of a process called crossing over where they get together and those genes actually jump across. That gives you even more variation. Sexual reproduction is about variation and creating diversity in entirely new organisms. So you get four daughter cells that have half the number of chromosomes. If I compare that back to mitosis, I get two daughter cells that have the exact same number of chromosomes that are exact copies. My meiosis has four daughter cells with half the chromosomes. Okay, so there's a big difference. Now the final word I want to say is that there are advantages and disadvantages of asexual and sexual reproduction. The advantages of asexual reproduction are you don't have to have a partner. And if the conditions are right for your species to grow, then you can just start making more of yourself. And you can do it very fast. That's an advantage. You can do it very, very quickly. Um, so you can populate an area very, very fast, which is good. The disadvantage is all of the organisms have the exact same DNA. So they're clones. And if a disease affects one, it will affect all of them. And that's what the Irish potato famine was all about that we talked about in class. It's, it's, there's no diversity, so what affects one affects them all. So a disease could come and wipe out everything. And that's a concern we have with bananas right now because all the bananas we eat are clones of other bananas. So um, we could be into that same boat. So that's a disadvantage. But the advantages are you can do it quickly and you don't need a partner. The disadvantage is they're all exactly the same. Sexual reproduction takes longer. You have to have a partner. Those might be disadvantages, but the advantages are you get lots and lots of diversity. You get lots and lots of differences. So where one disease could wipe out a few, there's a whole lot more that survive, and the species in general can survive for the long term, which is really cool. Now, this is a sperm cell, actual sperm cell, entering an egg cell. Each of these are called haploid cells. In a human, this would have 23 chromosomes, and this would have 23 chromosomes because they underwent meiosis to make each of these, all right? When they come together, they become diploid and have 46. Every cell in your body then undergoes mitosis to make more of themselves and have 46. So diploid sometimes is called 2N. Haploid is sometimes called N. Thanks for watching, and have a, have a great, great Christmas break. I'll see you after the break. I hope this helps you on your test. Thanks. Have a good day.